Good morning, everyone. When I was first approached about serving on the external advisory board for the iBuild project, I should probably have asked many questions, but I remember only one. Are you sure you want me? The reply from Chris Rogers was, well, you're a civil engineer, aren't you? Uh, indeed, I am. And yet, several months later, Andy Pike wrote to me, inviting me to deliver a short talk at the first uh, stakeholder day on, quote, the state of infrastructure financing in the United States, unquote, a topic of which I knew practically nothing, just enough to be dangerous. But I'm a civil engineer, I protested. But I knew several others at my university with extensive knowledge about this topic, financing methods and models, and they very graciously lent me their expertise. I like to think that at that point, I knew enough to be at least helpful. Now, I wouldn't suggest that this is the best way to approach interdisciplinary scholarship, that is, fear of being dangerous. But it does illustrate a common characteristic. The most interesting real problems, the most intellectually challenging research lie at the intersection of one or more disciplines. Where I build, these disciplinary routes include geography, economics, finance, planning, social sciences, and of course, engineering. Apologies if I left anything out. In a larger context, all of what we recognize today as quote unquote disciplines were themselves products of interdisciplinary inquiry. So my civil engineering lies at the edge with mathematics, material science, and physics. On occasion, these kinds of inquiries become meta-disciplines, and after enough information has been collected that a body of knowledge can be defined, a new discipline is born. We might call this the disciplinary cycle. I've asked myself, what happens to a discipline at the end of the cycle? Well, probably some of the knowledge gets absorbed or recycled, but most of it becomes archaic or probably irrelevant. So think of things like phrenology or alchemy or astrology. We don't talk about those too much anymore. If universities might be said to serve as guardians of the disciplines, they are also places where meta-disciplines come into being, often through problem-driven research like I build, of which we're going to hear a great deal today. But I'd like to focus for just a moment on a kind of a precursor to interdisciplinary scholarship, what I call collaboration, literally co-laboring. Forgive the diversion. Uh, many years ago, John F. Kennedy, when he was president of the United States, noted he was addressing a group of Nobel laureates at a White House dinner, quote, he said, this is the most extraordinary collection of talent, of human knowledge, that has ever been gathered together at the White House, with the possible exception of when Thomas Jefferson dined alone, end of quote. Jefferson was someone we might call polydisciplinary but most of us have neither the time nor the inclination to pursue that kind of scholarship. Leaving Jefferson aside, virtually all interdisciplinary work is the product of a high degree of collaborative trust, be it peer-to-peer, mentor-to-student, practitioner-to-theorist, or funder-to-fundee. It's this quality, I think, that gives researchers the energy to overcome a host of barriers to interdisciplinary study that ranges from different disciplinary languages and methods to sometimes rigid administrative structures often reinforced by disciplinary arrogance. So, how does the iBuild domain stack up on the collaboration scale? 